Hey, it's Kasim with Solutions 8, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to optimize um, your Shopify products, uh, and actually Shopify store, specifically for Google Ads. There's some things that you have to do, and what's really frustrating about it is Google doesn't do a good job at letting you know the like critical prerequisites. So there are some settings that if you don't have in place, you'll get uh, uh, penalized, or you know, shut down, or disapproved, or whatever, and um, you think that they'd like kind of give us a heads up on the front end, but they don't, so I'm going to help you. Uh, let's dive into it. Um, so we're in the Shopify back end. If you know Shopify, then this looks familiar to you. And right now what I'm doing is I'm looking at an individual product. Um, and incidentally, this isn't a copy creation course, so please don't critique or criticize my copy, okay? Um, although that's actually going to be the very first thing that I talk about. So you, when you're running uh, Google Smart Shopping specifically, Smart Shopping is going to use and rely very, very, very heavily on your product title. Um, so don't just be like, basket. This is a basket, and that's all I've got. Instead, try to build up your product title in a way that allows you to have you know, a little bit more at bat. So imagine that a machine is trying to determine exactly what it is that your product is. Um, and notice that we've got handmade, decorative, bold, tray, centerpiece, black star. Now, this is uh, kind of a, a takeaway from Amazon. Like Amazon's product titles, when you look at the people that are doing it really well, they're not written for humans. They're written for bots. Someday, I anticipate this changing. Someday, I anticipate us being maybe even moderately penalized for this. Uh, this reminds me of the, you know, if you've been in the SEO space 10 years ago, this is kind of like keyword fluffing for metadata. Um, but right now, it helps. So we're going we're gonna to do this until it doesn't help anymore. Um, really robust product titles really robust product descriptions. Do not phone this in. If you want to sell a product, you've got to tell Google what it is and what it's about. And the more uh, content you can build around um, your products, the more likely it is that your product is going to show up. Um, especially if you're using, um, if you're using something as, as robust and, and machine learning driven or AI driven as smart shopping. Uh, which, by the way, you should absolutely be using. Shopify is an integration with smart shopping. I'll go over that in another video. But robust titles, step one. Robust descriptions, step two. Make sure you're doing that. Um, the next thing that you need to absolutely positively have to have is uh, this barcode section here. Uh, you need what's called a GTIN. Um, and, and incidentally, some people are saying UPC uh, or GTIN. Those to Shopify apparently are interchangeable. They're interchangeable in my mind. I don't know the difference. So if there is one and you know what it is, hit me in the comments. Um, the site that I'm going to send you to is instantupccodes.com. If you don't have UPC codes for your... Um, products, then you can go get them from instantupccoach.com. There's another site, it's, it's GS1 something, it's like the actual, uh, the actual site is th are these guys, gs1.org. So you can go like to the governing body of this thing and you can go get your GTI encodes there. Um, the problem is I just feel like instant UPC codes is a little bit easier. So this is where you can go to get your, your GTI encodes. Every product needs a GTI encode. Here's how you think about this. Let me get big here because I've got a lot to talk to you about. Um, Google is building a relational database of the world, and I really mean that. They're cataloging all of the content, all the information, all the people, all the products, all everything that could happen, and then they're trying to figure out how they all interact together. Okay. With products specifically, they're trying to figure out who buys what, and who is easy to tag. Because Google knows who you are, and, and, and they know your unique identifier. The what, though, Google's unique identifier is the GTIN code. So if you're now you can run products without GTIN codes. But if you're selling a product and you don't have a GTIN code, A, Merchant Center is going to throw an error. Um, and then B, as far as the what, when you add a GTIN code, that's the unique identifier that Google's using in order to figure out like who's buying this type of product, um, where is this product applicable, and and if you have a product that has a pre-existing GTIN code, so like you know you're you're selling a you know product that already exists and the GTIN should be coming from the manufacturer and other people are selling that product, you actually get to benefit from the purchase intelligence that Google's gathering from those other folks. So if you don't have a GTIN code, you're not giving Google that like unique identifier, that thing to tag all of this lead intelligence against. So important. Adding GTIN, we've seen this, where there were campaigns that weren't performing, and then we added GTIN, and then the campaigns were performing. Um, so it's tedious, it's a nightmare, it's a pain in the hindquarters, especially if you haven't done a ton of SKUs. If you have too many SKUs, to be honest with you, I'd start, I'd start small. Go find your, your like highest margin SKUs or the things that you think are going to sell the best or whatever. Grab GTINs for them. Where this gets a, a little bit more um, difficult is you should technically have a different GTIN for every single variant. So if you've got, you're selling t-shirts, every color, new GTIN. Every size, new GTIN. Um, I just realized I have a lint on my t-shirt. 
Uh, what was I going to say? You don't have to do that. You can you can cheat it. If you are going to cheat it, the thing to do is to default to the one that's the cheapest. So we did this for a client who was selling um, uh, colognes and perfumes, and you know he'd have a bottle of, of cologne, and it would be in you know three different sizes. We got a GTI in for the smallest size because that's the size that's going to uh, be shown inside of the ad. So you see, you know it's the same product cheapest price and then you click through and then if they decide to upgrade, upgrade the price um, we're still giving the credit back to that original lower tier product. Now that's less than ideal but if you are going to cheat it that's the way to cheat it and I hope that made sense. I kind of went off on a little bit of a tangent but have to have a, a UPC or GTIN code. Um, SKU is not relevant to Google Ads. Maybe it's relevant to your business. I don't know. Uh, whatever you want to do with SKU, do what you want to do with SKU. The other thing is weight. You have to have a weight. Google Merchant Center is going to use the weight of the product in order to calculate shipping and you need to make sure that the shipping that Google Merchant Center calculates is the same shipping that you're charging if you ever have shipping that's more expensive than Merchant Center thinks it should be or the Merchant Center's calculated, instant disapproval. Google hates that. They, they think that you're hiding um, uh, uh, margins basically in shipping. So like you're charging exorbitant shipping rates or lying about your shipping or whatever. You need weights even if you have offers free shipping, by the way. Um, and you want to make sure that the weight is the product post packaging. It's whatever the shipping cost actually ends up uh, resulting from, like however this is calculated. Um, the other thing that you want to absolutely have, even if you're not exporting to other countries, you have to have a country of origin. Um, and this is where the product is actually coming from. This is tough for drop shippers. So my drop shippers that are, you know, getting products from a lot of different countries, God bless you and good luck. To be honest, I don't know exactly what to tell you. Um, I don't know how to contend with that. And if you know, drop it in the comments. But for most you know, Shopify store owners, you know where your products are coming from. Uh, they're coming from one country. Make sure that Google knows what the country of origin is. Um, this is also really critically important too. Um, sorry, I'm looking at my notes to make sure I've gone over everything. Yeah, so, oh, oh what's really cool is when you uh, connect Shopify with Google Merchant Center, Merchant Center is going to say, do you want to pull this information from Shopify? And the answer is going to be yes. So instead of having to hop through all those hoops, and you're going to uh, already have this information. So that's optimizing the product-based information. Now I'm going to show you something in the settings. I'm not saving my changes. Um, when you're in Shopify, go to settings and then go to legal. You've got to have all four of the things that we're about to see. So you'll see a refund policy, privacy policy, terms of service, shipping policy. Uh, here's what's really cool about Shopify is refund policy template. And Shopify will give you a refund policy template. Uh, same thing with the privacy policy. You can use Shopify's privacy policy template. Same thing with the terms of service. You can use uh, Shopify's uh, terms of service template. Shipping policy does not have a template. You have to write your own shipping policy. Um, here's the thing. You can't phone this in. As a business owner, this isn't Google Ads advice. This is just business advice. If, if you have a refund policy and you've used Shopify's template and you didn't read the policy, uh, you're asking for trouble. So if you're using the template or not, whatever you do, please make sure to read the T's and C's, um, get a really good handle on what's actually going on because you want to make sure that this isn't going to be something that's catastrophically damaging for your business. You know, if you have a perishable item or whatever and then you've just used Shopify's wholesale refund policy that says you're allowed to refund things for 180 days, it doesn't really say it. I don't know what it says. But you know what I mean? Like this could end up being a problem, a really big significant problem. So you need all four of these. You have to have them and spend the time that it would take to make sure that they're not, you know, diametrically opposed to whatever it is that you're you're actually trying to do from a business perspective. Um, and that's it. That's Well, I can't say that's it. That's not like all you need to do for Shopify and Google Ads, but that's kind of like the back-end optimization, sort of like dot and I's and cross and T's. Um, I actually want to dig in a little bit more into the Shopify and Google Ads world because there's, you know, Shopify is a phenomenal integration with Google Ads um, and we've had a lot of success there. We actually ran a challenge called the 3X Shopify Challenge. Shout out to my 3XS peeps um, if you're around. Um, and we'll probably be doing that again. So I'd like to um, maybe plant the flag in the world of you know Shopify plus Google Ads. These things have a phenomenal connection. We've been able to produce some amazing results. I've got a case study video somewhere floating around on some of the um, return on ad spend uh, case studies that we've been able to produce. And m most of those came out of Shopify stores. So I hope this is helpful. Uh, subscribe, please. I'm six people away from a thousand subscribers and then I can start going live. Um, so if you subscribed, thank you so much. Super grateful to you. I hope I continue to honor that by giving you really valuable content. Thumbs up if you liked the video, questions or comments in the comments. And otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you tomorrow.